What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to the Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we made our way through the Q room, which had some pretty interesting puzzles to solve. I, I enjoyed them quite a bit, actually. And now we're looking forward to seeing what's coming afterwards. And Fi, very artistically, very expressively says, Huh? <laughs> it opened. <laughs> we should get back to the Floor A warehouse, then. Hey, wait. Did you guys hear something? Yeah, I heard that. What? You didn't hear it? It came from over there. It sounds like something turned on. See, I told you. This screen wasn't on before. You're right. Guess it was set to turn on when we opened the door. It looks like an authentication screen. I think we need to put in an ID and a password. Yeah, but what? That was when I noticed the illustration. Yeah, it's only got a one-headed lion. A regular lion. <laughs> the lion is eating the sun. The lion is eating the sun. The lion is eating the... Memento Mori, remember death. If the ninth lion ate the sun. Flashback to all the various lions we've encountered. Should probably be counting them. Oh. Of course. This was the real ninth lion. But... If that was the case... Ah, yes, this again. Memento Mori. Remember death. Memento Mori. Remember death. Ooh, man, the flashbacks to all these cool moments. Memento Mori. Alright, um, so the question is, what is the password, right? Is this the first gate or the second gate? I don't remember. Let's try the first gate. I think it was GTF, and then DML. 016. I have this written down, I, I'm pretty sure that's Luna's model number or whatever, but um... I have that written down as first gate on my notes, so we'll give that a go first. Okay, unsurprisingly. Um, let's try second gate then. So for this one I have M-I-L-K-E-V-O-L-I. And then for password, I guess we'll try Jumpy Doll again? Hmm. I don't really have a whole lot else to, to try. I think we'll try that username again. And then for the password, we'll try that number sequence. I, I don't actually remember where I got this, but I wrote it down. <laughs> so it might be useful. That's not it. It's not any of the bomb ones. Oh, there goes my pen cap. Uh, I guess... We could try it uh, where it's like Luna's thing, GTF, DML, and then 016. And for the password, we can use that number sequence from before. 198... Four four nine three five one. That's not it either. Oh boy, guys. Oh boy. Memento Mori, remember death. If the ninth lion ate the sun. This is inevitably something I wrote down, but I don't know where. I'm pretty sure I used the first gate password or user ID, 
and password when I got the Luna True ending. So I think we're on the second gate. The only thing is I don't remember the password. I'm pretty sure the user is what I was saying before. M-I-L-K-E-V-O-L-I. The real question is, what's the password? I've already tried Jumpy Doll. I've already tried that number sequence. So honestly, I don't really know. Obviously, I've explored everything there is to explore in the rest of these timelines, so I've been exposed to it at some point, but I don't know what it is. I'll try Jumpy Doll again, I guess, but otherwise, I mean, I don't know. Pretty soon we're inevitably going to get a game over. When we, probably when we fail this time, because I think this will be our sixth attempt. Maybe I input this wrong or something for the password, but... Maybe it's the other way around. The second gate is the password and the username, or the ID is the long series of numbers. Maybe I'll try that. So if I make this part, the 19844, and then 9351. And then for the password I use M-I-L-K-E-V-O-L-I. Yeah, that's probably gonna get us a game over of some sort. Let's see what happens. I'm curious. Darn. I couldn't figure it out. What was the ID I needed? What was the password? Did I know them? Had I seen them before? In another history? Surely. Perhaps it had something to do with that card. If I had found an ID card on the old woman's body, and if I recall correctly it had something, had said something about a password. Yeah, I mean we know it's Jumpy Doll. What the password was though I couldn't recall. If the card was the key though, then I need to put in the woman's name for the ID. That's, that's what it is. That's the key there. So the ID would be then her name, right? Remember, Sigma, you need to remember what was the old woman's name? What was written on the back of the card? Gotcha. I wonder, did we use the M-I-L-K-E-V-O-L-I -E at some point? I don't remember. I wish they would have just told me, or I mean, given me another opportunity to input it after that reminder, right? Because we're just gonna, we're just gonna jump back into it. I wonder if they want the last name to, in addition to the first name, or if, we, like, if we are supposed to know the first name. Actually, there's no way. They wouldn't, I mean, realistically, people have played 999 before this game, but they haven't even mentioned or tied together Akane and Kurashiki, right, from the ID and from what Temyoji said. They've introduced both of those names individually, but they haven't tied the two together, so I wouldn't expect them to actually know. The other thing is we only have nine characters, and Kurashiki is nine characters, so... So, that makes sense. Yeah, I wish they just gave me another chance to input it after that clue. Alright, so the ID... Password, jumpy doll. What's going on with the audio there? That... Did that come on your guys' end, too? For some reason, it seemed a little bit staticky. Alright, well, we made it through. Sigma! Look! There she is! I love this music. Your are Akane! Her name is Kurashiki Akane. I've been looking for her for a very long time. He walked toward her. Slowly, carefully, almost as if he was afraid of scaring her away, he reached out. She's a hologram. Temyoji squeezed his eyes shut. 
He closed his hand around empty air and let it fall to his side. Oh, poor Tenmyoji. We still don't know what the relationship was. There was a moment of sad silence, and then she began to speak. I see you finally arrived. I've been waiting for you. Well, I suppose that's slightly inaccurate. What you see now is a holographic message I recorded before you came here. Unfortunately, this means I will not be able to answer your questions, at least not directly. I hope you will understand. Now, where to begin? You probably have a great many questions. What day is it? Where are we? Who is Zero, and what does he have to do with Kurashiki Akane? But I imagine there is one question that rises above all the others. Why were we brought here? The answer to that is simple. Everything that has happened here is part of our plan. All of this was required for the success of the AB project. I assume you've heard the name by now, at least. In any event, you were all needed in order to execute our plan. The Nonary game was necessary for the same reason. Your question now, I imagine, is just what is this AB project? The answer to that is also simple. Allow me to explain. We created the AB project for one purpose. To transport the consciousness of two people into the past. Those two people are you, Sigma, and you, Phi. What do you mean, the past? The moment the words were out of my mouth, I realized no one there could answer the question. Not Phi, not Temyoji, and certainly not a pre-recorded hologram. Have you figured out what this room is? I assume you saw the cue on the door. It stands for Quantum. That makes this the Quantum Room. It took me a moment to realize she changed subject subjects without even pausing. There was nothing we could do, of course, but I still felt a twinge of frustration. Take a look at the rear of the room. Do you see that large enclosure? That houses our quantum computer. The systems that control this entire facility run on that machine. That includes the construct you refer to as Zero Junior, as well as the golems. All of them do their thinking in that box. Isn't that strange though? It seems contrary to how we perceive the world. The body, the thing that you see and interact with, is somewhere else. But the mind and all its thoughts are in this box. Perhaps it isn't so strange, though. Perhaps humans are the same, with our minds and thoughts existing separate from our bodies. Of 
our core is in our head, of course. We all have individual brains, think individual thoughts, and act according to individual wills. That makes communication difficult, though. So, we're forced to rely on inefficient mediums, like language, photographs, nonverbal cues, etc., to transmit information. Each one of us is an individual, and we have no direct connection to anyone else. But is that really true? In the dimensions we are most familiar with, yes, it is. If we look at things from another higher dimension, however, we may all be connected after all. Like the branches of a tree. Or a rhizome. Imagine a horizontal cross-section of the root system of a large tree. All you can see are the spots where the, where the roots intersect the plane of your cross-section. In the two dimensions you see, the roots all appear to be individual things, with no connection to one another. But this isn't the case. If you expand your view and look at the root system in three dimensions instead of only two, you see the truth. All the roots join together at the trunk. In two dimensions, they appear to be separate. But if you look at the roots from a third, higher dimension, you see? Things that might appear to be separate from one another in three dimensions could be connected to one another if you look at them in four dimensions. Doesn't that at least seem like it could be a possibility? Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I mean, we've already explored this thought quite a bit throughout the rest of the game. But I think what's interesting is that this could apply both to individuals, right? Like Sigma and Phi being connected on some level, but also timelines, right? So one Sigma being connected to other Sigmas, in a sense. I believe that is how human consciousness actually works. Well, I'm not the only one, I suppose. Zero and I share that belief. Morphogenetic field theory. theory. Temyoji mumbled something that sounded like nonsense. I opened my mouth to ask him what it meant, but Akane was already talking again. Now, when I talk about a fourth dimension, I'm referring to the fourth dimension used in Minkowski space-time. Let's start with a single dimension, where all that exists is a point. Connect points to one another, and you have a line. In one dimension, the only surface you can create is that, a line. But move to two dimensions, and create more lines, and you can create shapes. These are two-dimensional surfaces. Move up to three dimensions, and you can connect these shapes to one another and form three-dimensional objects. Now you have a three-dimensional surface, which encompasses a volume of space.
connect three-dimensional objects to one another, and you formed a four-dimensional object, which encompasses a volume of both space and time. For what it's worth, I don't know if this is the best representation, but... It is on that fourth dimensional axis that our minds are connected. If that was true, then that would prevent anyone from sending their consciousness backward or forward in time. That theory is the foundation of the AB project. The A represents after, and the B represents before. It probably sounds silly to you. A ridiculous story made up by a mad old woman. But look at what's happened to you. You've seen many different worlds and timelines, haven't you, Sigma? And what about you, Phi? I know you have too. Am I wrong? We still don't know who Phi is, right? And why Sigma and Phi have been chosen to be these people. Temyoji should know what I'm talking about as well. I believe you experienced something very similar nearly half a century ago. Is Temyoji Junpei? You sent your consciousness to the past to help save a little girl's life. It was a long time ago, but... Perhaps you still remember. Yeah, of course I do. How could I forget? That little girl was you, Akane. Suddenly it felt like Fai and I were outsiders, trespassing on something we had no right to see. Temyoji's face was taut with, emo taut with emotion as he looked into Akane's eyes. It seemed almost like she was looking back at him. Now, unfortunately, my time is up. I still don't, I don't remember the specifics well enough to know if that confirms that Temyoji's Junpei or not. I don't, I don't remember. I'm trying to remember the exact ending of 999. I don't, but I don't remember the specifics. The final stage of the project will begin very soon. I need to go prepare. The next time we meet, I can tell you the rest of the story. So come and find me. I'll be waiting. One last thing. The cat in the box. Is it alive? Or is it dead? Sigma, Phi, you will decide its fate. Goodbye. Wait, Interesting. What does she mean by that? I guess more important, or more explicitly, what is that analogy specifically referring to? What's the cat, right? What's the box? What's the outcome? Wait. Akane, Akane wait. Wait. <laughs> Oh, Temyoji. I can almost see you. You don't need to worry. Everything's going to be okay. I will see you again one day. I promise. But I'm going to have to ask you to wait just a little longer. Interesting, is she referring to Temyoji developing the ability or somehow being able to go to the past, because clearly Akane is dead in this timeline. Akane! Wait. Akane! And then she was gone. Temyoji collapsed to his knees, his back hunched and shaking. 
I saw tears land on the white-knuckled fists he pressed against his thighs. That's sad. I kept quiet. What was there to say? Fi and I looked at one another and nodded silently. With a shaking hand, Temyoji pulled a photograph out of his pocket. It was a picture of a girl. After all that we'd been through, her smile was enough to break your heart. The feels are strong, guys. We made our way to the warehouse on floor A and met up with the others. It took only a few minutes to decide to head to the infirmary. That's right, we can heal up Alice and Quark. As soon as we arrived, we began to treat Alice and Quark for Radical Six. I gave Luna the Accelivere that I'd found in the Q room. She quickly prepared it and... Injected Alice and Quark. Thank goodness. It will take some time for them to recover completely. But they should be fine. Good. Indeed. Thank you, Luna. And thanks for finding the medicine, you guys. Thank you so much. Don't sweat it. No need to thank us. Demyoji said nothing, just walked over to Quark's unconscious body. He took the small boy's hand in his own and held it tight. I could see tears at the corners of his eyes as he turned away from us. Oh, Temyoji's really been through a lot. Suddenly, I remembered. Dio. Where had he gone? It didn't take me long to find him. He was sprawled, unconscious, on the floor beneath the sink. Handcuffs? Oh, we found those in the crew quarters. Before you returned, we went to check on the bomb in room 2 and we found them there. Of course, the bomb was indeed turned off. Thank you again for dealing with them. You are quite literally lifesavers. You have my eternal gratitude. I coughed awkwardly and looked pointedly around the room. I glanced over at Fi to see if she was doing the same thing. After that, we headed back to the Floor A warehouse to play the A-B game. Specifically me, Phi, K, and Luna. Clover and Temyoji decided to remain in the infirmary, just in case something happened with Alice, Quark, or Dio. With so many people kind of sitting out of the game, it's gonna make it a lot easier to play, right? Luna would represent Clover's team. With Quark and Dio sleeping, K would represent their team by default. Which left me, Phi, and Temyoji. You should vote. Nope, I'll let you handle it. I chose Betray in the last round. You probably don't trust me right now. What? That doesn't matter now. Excuse me. I apologize for interrupting, but I think you should be the one to vote in the next round, Fi. Why? You already have 9 BP. There's no reason for you to choose Betray now. Actually, there is. She could drop from 9 BP, right? At this point, her winning strategy is actually to exclusively choose Betray, because she's already at 9, right? You see? Hey, you're acting like I might actually try and betray her. Not necessarily. Um... What does it matter what he's suggesting? We're almost there. 
We just have to play the AB game three more times. Then we can all get nine points. But that means each representative has to choose ally all three times. Yeah, sounds about right. Okay. I'll vote. You sure you're all right with this, Sigma? Yeah. I trust you. I handed her the star key. Yeah, if our events over the past, I don't know, however long it's been, right? Diffusing all the bombs, getting all the passwords and stuff. If that's not enough to earn your trust by, right? Shall we open the doors? An ambidex gate has been opened, 45 minutes, yada yada Oh, right. We have to wait for the deadline. Oh. Well, we could vote earlier, but then you'd just be stuck in the AV room for a while, so might as well hang out here for a bit. But then each voter would be stuck inside the AV room for 45 minutes. Hmm. Okay. Let's go back to the infirmary then. I agree. Please, lead the way. Yeah, makes sense. Luna and Kay set off toward the yellow door. I was about to follow when... Hold on. I just remembered something. What? The AB room on the left. In one of the other histories, she... Yeah, she was dead. Uh, oh yeah. You're right. Akane's body was in there. What does this mean? Why didn't we find her body this time? Maybe because she wasn't murdered. But how? When did history change? Sigma. Do you remember what Akane said? Yeah, I mean, I remember as well. The cat in the box. Is it alive? Or is it dead? Interesting. Sigma Phi, you'll decide its fate. She's referring to herself inside the AB room, potentially? The Schrodinger's cat thing. Exactly. I wonder what she meant about us deciding its fate. Perhaps she was saying her own fate wasn't decided yet. Huh? The history where she's alive and the history where she's murdered are both real right now. What? No, that's impossible. I mean, it is impossible in our world, but in Zero Escape world, it is very possible. We already talked about this, I think, in the archives, right? That... As absurd as it sounds to us, in this reality, we're essentially determining the outcome based on what we observe afterwards, once we've opened the box. We've already opened the box. We opened the door to this AB room, and there was no body. No, we haven't opened the box. We haven't found a body, but we haven't found her alive yet either. In other words, we haven't actually observed her. The hologram was recording from before this game started. The next time we meet, I can tell you the rest of the story. Interesting. Then how did the beginning of the notary game play out differently, right? With Dio infiltrating and needing to kill someone in order to play in the first place. The fact that Dio is playing the game with a bracelet means somebody died. So come and find me. And we know all of the other intended participants are here. So Akane must be dead, right? I'll be waiting. Where was Akane now? Where was she waiting for us? Or what if she wasn't anywhere now? What if she was waiting for us in another timeline?
Or what if she was waiting for us in the past? Was that even possible? If she was, what would that mean? Oh boy. About to get a brain blast. Hype music. What? What? I thought it was going to be like, a new destination has been added to the flowchart. Are you for real right now? <laughs> Are you f for real right now, Virtue's Last Reward? <laughs> what? <laughs> a new destination has been added, and it's in the past. Of course, so the AV game is all about time travel, right? And now that we've gone through all of these things, we've hopped you know, back and forth between timelines, we've used histories from other timelines, or even one of you know our own, there was that time earlier with Alice specifically when we tried to find her, we failed, and then we went back in the same timeline and then chose differently, right? So it's not the first time we've done this, but now we're really going back in time before the Nonary game started, potentially, right? How does this even play out? Is our consciousness just going to, in a sort of dissociative manner, observe everything going on before the Nonary game started? It's not like we're conscious, right? We, we've we been supposedly, you know, like cryostasis. It's not like if we go back to that consciousness, it's going to be any fruitful endeavor, right? If anything, we have to go back to before we were even abducted and know to look for Akane at that point. And if so, that's going to be really far in the past, potentially. So this is this is actually pretty mind-blowing. This, this has me very hyped, and I'm very much looking forward to it. But of course, we are going to tackle the past in the next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was very fun getting to talk to Akane. And now, like I said, I'm, I'm super eager to see just how far back in the past we have to go to have a meaningful interaction with Akane before we're abducted, right? Which is potentially decades in the past. This is, this is pretty crazy. And the Akane of the future knows that this conversation is going to be happening. So what's it going to be like when we talk to Akane in the past? Is she going to have some degree of awareness of the future that's happening? Slash, has it already happened, right? If we're coming back from it? No, I mean, the idea is that there's part of the whole idea is that there are multiple timelines that are constantly running. They're, you know, it's like a string that doesn't progressively lengthen. It's, it always exists. So the future is happening at the same time as the past. And um, the AV project is trying to show that people can jump not just from one timeline to another, but from one end of that timeline to, uh, you know, a previous end. But, whew, crazy stuff. But uh, I'm excited. So, until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.